up everyone? I know it's been a while, but I'm back to show you the 33 and boy have we done quite a bit. We skipped about 50 steps I think since I last saw you so um, without further ado, here's the uh, R33. So um, quite a bit's been done. Uh, I'm here at Absolute Customs it's in uh, High Wycombe in the United Kingdom. Uh, basically I brought the car to Nick who's the owner of Absolute Customs. He's a, he's a master fabricator and welder. And we're gonna do a full underbody restoration, which uh, you can see was well underway at the moment. So um, let me kind of explain to you where, where we are since the last time you saw the car. Look at this beauty. I mean, it's, it's fucking crazy. Um, we, we spent a couple weeks actually stripping the entire car off. Um, I only did, I only did a little bit. I brought two work buddies, really good friends of mine. We trailered the car down. We pulled the engine and gearbox out. As you can see, no more engine and gearbox because the job's kind of expanded since we first started. Um, and a lot of the things that we need to do to the car require removing the engine. Um, that's cool though, because I know we're gonna do a better job than, uh, than we would have done before by leaving the engine in. So you can see tons of corrosion and rust. It's pretty crazy. Um, but so far no serious surprises that we didn't already know was here see some bad under seal attempts um rust and seams but things like the the quarter panel seam looks looks pretty good um, but <laughs> you get over here and you're like holy crap so this all will be sandblasted we'll scraped off and then they'll sandblast back to bare metal um so we'll be able to kind of have more of a finish like this so you can actually see where the holes are uh, and there's plenty of holes Speaking of which, we got one right here. Um, Nick's gonna be able to, to recreate this entire panel actually to, to cover the hole and then kind of reinstate the lip, which, which runs from about here to here from OEM. Um, as well as that, obviously, bend all this back into place because this gets smashed up when people jack up their cars in the wrong location. Uh, so we're gonna rebuild this whole, this whole seam so it kind of looks like, like it should from the factory and give you a proper jacking point. Moving down to the frame rails, um, as expected on every single Nissan, you get uh, smashed up frame rails. These are probably from a forklift, at least that's what Nick thinks. Um, this will be cut out and um, uh, re-welded in, so it'll pull it, pull it flat, correct, and then re-weld it in but before doing the full under seal and, and uh, sealing, seam sealing and, and primer and all that kind of stuff. So. A lot of metal work to be done before we even get to resealing the car. He's done quite a number of pulling off, uh, you know, corrosion down here and things like, actually not too bad. Just check out some of this. So, um, as it was explained to me, when you, when you smash this point up here, um, it kind of creates a uh, a water pocket so as the car is kind of sloped down from the factory the front end is lower than the rear end water gets into the, uh, the sill and it rushes towards the front of the car but if this is smashed up it can't properly drain out thus causing this kind of uh, uh, rust here on the inner sill um, Nick's aware of it he's cool with that and be able to uh, to rectify and reinstate the uh, the patches as well as bringing it back all the way up Today I gotta do some work stripping out uh, the rest of the engine bay. Probably take some of these pipes off, this uh, insulation pack. Um, things like the uh, washer bottle, maybe some of this harness, this solenoid, the fuse box. Pull some of these small things off because these all need to come off uh, before you can kind of get to real work in, in the engine bay. This, this freaking crap, this is like spray on under seal someone did from a can. And it's, it looks like he sprayed too much in a lot of places all over the car. So we'll have to, uh, that'll all get scraped off down to bare metal before we re, uh, reseal and reseam seal. I was kind of surprised but happy that uh, under the fuel cell is actually not, not too crusty. Um, these frame rails are, are pretty dirty. Um, and a lot of these kind of gussets and supporting structures that's built up in here in the back of the car doesn't look particularly nice, but um, you know, is what it is. Finally here towards the back, um, this is all kind of crusty in this corner as, as the quarter panel and the, uh, the inner panels and the boot kind of get tacked together. 
Uh, there's definitely some rust on the uh, roof floor on the inside that's going to get all fixed and rectified in the process. Um, all up here, this will all get taken care of. So, uh, this is the last time you'll see it this shitty. <laughs> Don't think I'd see my reflection in the front windshield like this. In the engine bay, it's actually not too bad. We're definitely gonna do the strut tops. You can see that here. Um, those are so typical, every single one of them. R33 and 34 is gonna have a rust issue here. Uh, we're also gonna have to pull up these, uh, these gussets here uh, as they're tacked into place, water gets underneath it. So this needs to be cleaned up and then also this one here on both sides. Uh, besides that, this, it looks like it was a, either from a, an accident at some point in its life. There was a, a little bit of a reseal job here that runs um, into this corner. You can kind of see the seam sealer was like uh, bodged on. So we're going to pull all that up to try to see what's going on back there. And hopefully it's not, not too big a deal in the process. Um, try to reinstate anything if the metal split or whatever. So. Other than that, engine bay is actually, you know, it's not too bad. My goal is to have the engine bay resprayed after we uh, sandblast, replace these, um, seam seal, brand new seam seal, and fix all the uh, small little rust spots in here. Have the whole engine bay resprayed, base and clear, because I want the kind of US style glossy engine bay, and then we'll put the engine back in when it's when it's done. All right, now we got the car rotated back. Uh, to its normal uh, normal state so you can see more of the stuff I have to pull out today. Uh, really annoying. But uh, something I did want to show you guys was um, the outer sill. So these are, it's a typical problem area on these cars. So just under the side skirt is this metal piece here. You can see uh, the side skirt pops into uh, little plastic clips, which I've destroyed almost every single one of them. But you can see as water collects in there, you get, you get rust uh, rust holes like this. So um, this can all be all be fixed. Um, most of the time, it looks like um, people like Nick and other guys that work in the space end up just re re uh, manufacturing the sills, the outer sills here, uh, and also you can see uh, reinstating that lip. That's a part of the sill, the outer sill and the inner sill as they come together. Your typical jack and point. So that'll get reinstated um, and uh, look brand new. I have a friend of mine that actually has an outer sill for the right hand side that I might buy from him just to uh, save some time and it'll you know give it the super factory look. This is an interesting part Nick's been grinding away at. Um, there's a lot of filler here and we don't know why exactly, but it was probably done when they resprayed the car. So uh, I'm trying to get down to the bottom of the filler, find some rust holes to be expected, and clear all this up. In the interior, I uh, pulled up the carpet, take out the rear seat so we can kind of assess uh, any damage. <laughs> uh, everything looks all right. There's some rust over under the rear seat. You see in these corners, try to clear that up. Um, but then pulling the carpet, I mean, look how, uh, this is funny, this all looks brand new. Uh, pulling the carpet, we can kind of see that the, uh, the inner sill is a little crusty up here towards the ECU. We have no heater in here. Everything is stripped out. This car is a bucket of parts right now, but this is how we're gonna get it looking amazing. Pretty nuts. So I'm here working through the engine bay, stripping as much as I can out. Took the um, charcoal canister off. Um, took a relay and a bunch of other stuff over there. I unbolted the wiper motor, but it seems to be attached from inside, so I have to disconnect that and now working uh, working around the fuse box area um, snapped off two nice bolts right here pulling off the uh, boost solenoid and there's a, a relay and I've just been uh, collecting all of our bits put them aside um, of interest here's our front and rear subframe look how fucking crusty uh, not too bad I mean like it's all got to be sandblasted uh, obviously the knuckles need to be media blasted and they're probably not cleared but then i'm gonna try to i'm gonna powder coat the arms and the subframes I haven't figured out what i want to do with uh, the mps um power steering 
that needs to be redone. And then some cleaning up of the diff and uh, drive shafts as well front and rear. So it's all here, ready to roll. Nice, nice. All right, so this is where we got to at the engine bay. Not too, uh, not too much left. Just the harness. We're gonna pull through and um, get ready to to prep this for uh, get it for, for sandblasting. This is Nick, everyone. Hi, Nick. Absolute Hi, yeah. Customs. Um, he's the master for all this and. Uh, yeah, I think until next week, uh, he's going to spend a little more time, uh, I guess, taking all the uh, under seal that was left under, uh, left here and getting this all ready for the sandblast, which should be happening in about a week or so. So uh, until then, signing off, I guess, tune in for next time.